need to go pick up some acetone so I can get this tote glued back together again. As soon as I get the video uploaded today, I can take off and go down to Menards and get some acetone. This is the tote from the number eight. It's cracked, probably got dropped, although I don't think it got dropped very seriously because this little horn's not broken off. Usually when they get dropped, that horn gets broken off first thing because the grain goes this way. So that's a real short section of grain right there. It's been through some uh, use and abuse. It's got a few dings and dents in it. But we're gonna glue it back together again with some Loctite five minute epoxy. This little jig is a design I got from Scott Grandstaff and Jim Thompson. They're two guys that I got to know through the old tools network. And this works really, really good. Seems that Stanley used a 5 16 hole all the way through this handle, even though the bolt is much smaller than that. That's the size hole that they used. So this 5 16 bolt going up through that hole pretty much takes up all the clearance inside of it. Makes it so that these two pieces line right up. Then I can, with this wedge on there, that allows for the angle of the bottom. And I just put a washer and the nut on the top and tighten the two nuts pull this together sometimes I have to put a clamp on the sides to make sure everything lines up because the totes tend to get twisted when they break I think the wood relaxes and that it kind of the spring goes out of it you can see that this side is a little bit bigger gap than the other side this side is nice and tight this one's got a little air showing in there so by putting the clamp on it, I pull that together. Now some of the Stanley planes have hardwood handles. The ones made during the war years weren't exactly the same as the ones made during uh, peacetime production. Peacetime production, they had a lot more supplies and materials to work with, and rosewood makes a really good handle. But rosewood is oily. So one of the first things I need to do is wash down the parts with some acetone. That takes the oil out of the wood and makes it so that the epoxy sticks well. But because I'm going to be working with acetone, I don't want to get it on my skin. It's just nasty stuff. pair of nine mil rubber gloves and I'm protected from getting contaminants into my bloodstream. Now acetone if you work in a confined space can be dangerous. It'll build up and the fumes can actually make you intoxicated and cause severe liver damage. I'm only going to be doing just a little bit of this so I'm not concerned about it here but you want to keep that in mind when you're doing it. Doesn't take much. Just want to wet down the surface. 
Now, because I'm using paper towels, they're nice and handy because they're disposable, but they also tend to shred stuff everywhere. And you can see how fast the acetone dries up. It's very volatile. It evaporates quickly. I'm gonna put this back over on the shelf. Four dollars. What? 20 seconds? I'm all done with it. Now this I don't want to throw in the trash. I want to take that out and dispose of outside the house. Need a little stirring stick to mix the epoxy with. And one of my handy plastic trays. Now this tube of stuff cost me three dollars and ninety-seven cents at Menards. I was supposed to pull the plunger back slightly. There we go. Then cut the tips off the tubes. And I want to wipe off my blade and get the epoxy off of it because it'll make a sticky mess if I don't. Move this bit of the tip over out of the way. And if I keep everything right here in this tray, it's all disposable. Then I just push enough of it out to make a batch, pull the plungers back slightly, and slip this cap back on. That plugs up the end of the five minute epoxy and that should hold it for a while. Then I just mix this together. Now I'm using clear. You can get it in colored and you can mix powder in with it to make it any color you want. And this is five minute epoxy. It starts setting up pretty quickly. So one of the things I want to be careful is not to get it down in the hole any more than I absolutely have to. I don't think there's any rule that says I have to get it down into that hole. I want 100% cover on the wood, but that's the only thing I need to do. Now myself, I put it on both sides. Do I need to? I don't know. This way I make sure that I have enough that it goes in and fills up all the gaps. Because wherever it's not touching, it's not doing anything. Having a coating of epoxy on one side without having it contact the other is a waste of effort. Okay. Now I slip my jig up through there, slide the other piece down onto it, and this is why I wear rubber gloves. I just stuck my fingers into epoxy, but it doesn't matter because the rubber glove is going to take all the crap off, keep all the crap off my fingers. Just would really like to not have it <laughs> glue everything together. That's where you can see the, the alignment is kind of wonky on this.
Now, I'm going to use this clamp, but I'm also going to fold this little piece of plastic over the top so that I'm gluing the plastic rather than the clamp. Now it has to sit five minutes. This pair of shears sees a lot of use. I cut a lot of stuff with them. They cut a lot of things. But they don't cut plastic bags so good anymore. They tend to catch. So that tells me I gotta sharpen them. This is called draw filing. I'm gonna hold the file 90 degrees to the surface and I'm gonna have the angles going this way. So I, in this file I have the handle off to the left. These shears aren't all that dull, work all that dull, now they're sharp. Only takes a few seconds. And when you put the shears together, you wanna have that little bit of a wiping sound. You wanna have those two blades kind of touching as they go across. Only takes a second and now I have a nice sharp pair of shears again. Now the epoxy is set up. Trim off the excess. a long piece of thread rod in there. I use this for all kind of totes. Sometimes 
because they drill this from two different directions, they drill it from this side and then they drill it from that side and let the holes meet in the middle. Sometimes the holes don't meet exactly and you have to take a 5 16 drill bit and run down through it. Also when they're broken, they don't always line up back perfect. Sometimes the front's a little tight or the back's a little tight and it'll cause it to kick and that'll tend to lock it up on the screw. Just crank it out. Having full thread on there means that you can just take it out like it's a bolt. The epoxy is set up, but it's still just a little gummy. So I'm going to let it set a little longer before I go after it with the sandpaper. But what I'm going to be doing is just sanding that down smooth, taking all the finish off of it. Because trying to match the finish on this pet part that I repaired is nearly impossible. I suppose somebody with a lot of time and skill could probably do it. But I think it looks better just having it sand it down, and a new coat of boiled linseed oil put over the top of it, and a nice wax finish, and the whole thing's going to look like that, and I think that's going to look much better than trying to match this small section in here to all this schmutz and dirt on the rest of the plain tote. Besides which, when I think about it, patina is just all the crap that everybody ever had on their hands when they were working with a plane. And not everybody was as fastidious about keeping clean as we are today. And remember, no running water, outdoor toilets, wasn't a whole lot of hand washing going on. So having that dirt on there means after I'm done uh, sanding this down and before I do anything else, I'm going to wash my hands. That's how you glue a tote back together again. That five minute epoxy is pretty good stuff. I've had good success with it. I've glued together several totes. This is one of them. This is that uh, plane that I silver soldered back together again and fixed the tote. It's an old beat up ugly plane that I fixed. The only reason it has any value at all is because I fixed it. So I tend to use this on things that I don't really worry too much about and that I not scared if I damage the plane a little bit because this one's been hammered. But the totes held up well. All the abuse I've given it, no problems. So that's this morning's video. I glued together a tote, sharpened a couple of pairs of shears. I think that's a pretty good job for about a half an hour's work. Sharpening the shears gave me something to do while I was waiting for the epoxy to dry. Always want to have something to keep your hands off of it, otherwise you want to fiddle with it. At least I do. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.